So this is the new Control Pro from PAC. It's our new steering wheel control interface. In addition to analog that the RC already does, this one does CAN bus, LAN bus, LIN bus, Class 2, IE bus, serial data, and the analog. So in addition to all the data protocols added, we've given you multiple analog inputs too. That's why you don't have to tie a bunch of resistors together and hook them all to one wire. So in addition to the hardware upgrades, the biggest thing would be the programming options. And there's four ways of programming. So I'll start out with app mode. And with app mode, we can use, use a tablet, we can use a phone, we can use a PC, it can be Apple, it can be Android, whatever you like. So fresh out of the box, the interface comes set for app mode with all the dip switches down. So since we're using a tablet, we're gonna take the supplied adapter that comes with every CP5, hook it into the interface, go ahead and connect our tablet. It gives you audible confirmation that the tablet's been connected. So this vehicle we're in is a 2005 Ford Expedition. So we'll go ahead and look our vehicle up here. So now I just programmed it for this vehicle. So if the customer's happy with the buttons working at face value, you can go ahead and install it in the vehicle and it'll just work. However, if you would like to remap the buttons, we also give you that option in the app. So what you're seeing here is a list of all the possible buttons in this vehicle along with all of the possible functions for the radio. Since this particular vehicle does not have the seek up and down buttons, go ahead and set those to none. Now we'll go down here and repurpose our fan buttons to do our track up and track down. You can also set two functions to every button, so short press, long press functionality. So now that I have the buttons remapped, I can go ahead and send it to the interface. So now we just programmed it for this vehicle along with the custom mapping. If you do a lot of the same vehicle, you can save the file here for later use. So that way if you do a lot of fleet work or you know dealer work and you do say 10 of the same vehicle, you can go ahead and make a configuration for one, save it, and then the next nine you'll just load that configuration right in there. We also give you the installation instructions right here in the app, give you a detailed pinout wire for wire where they connect to. So as you can see here, the black wire on the module goes to connector one, pin six, which is a black and green wire. Down here we give you your connector pictures and reference numbers. And just like the current SWI site, we have any applicable notes connecting it to the radio, loop instructions, etc. So that is the programming via app mode. Next we're going to do programming in configuration mode. So let's say you don't have a cable connect to connect it to your smart device or you forgot it or lost it or what have you, but you still need to program it. We can now go ahead and look up the same vehicle in the app. vehicle, our wiring options, our radio, we hit next. This time it's going to give us the installation instructions first because it does not see an interface connected. If you're programming it with a tablet or a phone it has to be connected to the vehicle in order to communicate. So we give you the installation instructions first that way you can go ahead and install it. We'll go ahead and hit next. It says you're not connected. Would you like to proceed? Yes. So now it's telling us to set the dip switches as shown. So you can see here it shows you your vehicle dip switches and your radio dip switches. So we'll go ahead and take our interface, set it to the proper configuration. Plug it in. And now it just works. So the buttons are now working at face value. However, if the customer would still like them to be remapped, we can do that the old fashioned way using the programming button. Now this time we get confirmation beeps of when we've entered programming and when each button is being pressed on the steering wheel. This, this method will still allow us to do short press, long press, so two functions on one button. And we can skip functions from the programming button just like the way it is with the RC. So we'll go ahead and let that mode time out. 
Ongle confirmation, the mode is timed out and programming is complete. That's the second way of programming. The third way is what we're calling manual mode. So now I can take all the vehicle dip switches, put them all up. Got the radio dip switches set for Pioneer, connect it. So now basically what we have is an SWIRC. It doesn't know what kind of car it's in, it doesn't know what the buttons are doing. So now we can program it using two different ways. The first one, again, is the old fashioned way with the programming button. So we'll push the button. We're in programming mode. And now we can push the button on the steering wheel and hold it until a beep is heard. With the RC, you have to press and hold it for five seconds to make sure the ADC value is learned, but now we're giving you audible confirmation of when that happens. You can also do short press, long press in this mode as well. So two functions, one button. And just like before, we can skip the functions with the button there. Go ahead and wait seven seconds, let that time out. And now we're done programming and it's ready to use. The second method of programming in manual mode would be using the app. So now we will take our supplied adapter, go ahead and connect it to the interface, connect our tablet to the interface, and this time when it connects, it's going to read the dip switches are in manual mode, and then it's with a Pioneer radio. So now here we have a list of our available commands for Pioneer. Now we can start the programming directly from the app. And as you can see, as I move through the buttons, it highlights them, shows you where you're at. If I skip one, gray it out and again here you can do the short press long press functionality so two functions on one button unlike the RC which has the seven second time limit when you're using the app to do manual programming there is no time limit so if you're in the middle of programming and the phone rings or a customer comes in you can put the tablet down go do what you have to do come back and it'll be here for you and you can continue right through the program learning mode ended now it's programmed the way we see here. The fourth and final way of programming is using a USB stick. So the configuration file that we saved earlier can be loaded on here or firmware updates as well. We're going to do a configuration file. So again, we're going to use the supplied adapter. I have the config file on the thumb drive. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Gives me audible confirmation it's been connected. There we go. It just reflashed the uh, module for the custom mapping table I saved to that thumb drive. In addition to all of the programming options, there's a few more things we've added into the app. You can also update the firmware. So I can click on the firmware tab, check for update. It tells me my firmware is up to date. If it would have been out of date, it would have downloaded the new file and updated it for me. You can also have a link directly to tech support in the app. If you want to call tech support, live support, start a call and we can dial them up right there from the app. Or if you don't want to call in or sit on hold or you got other things to do, you can hit submit ticket. And now it asks you for all your information. You fill all that out and send it and it also sends an event log from the module. When tech support receives this, it automatically puts you in queue and when they call you back, they know everything that's going on get right to the point. And that's it. That's the uh, new Control Pro from PAC.